Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. I'm continuing my review of The World Upside Down, which is a uh, video outlining the tenets of young earth creationism. And I'm getting into a section right now that has to do with space and astronomy and physics. So I'm going to kind of do these one right after the other and break them up into weekly episodes. So let's cue up the music and get started with Young Earth Creationism and Space Travel. You may be wondering, if the firmament really is above us, then what about rockets that I've seen being launched into space? Have you ever noticed that after rockets launch, they don't go straight up? They fly horizontal to the ground. Why would they do that? If they really were trying to reach something such as space, they would fly straight up. The reason they fly horizontal to the ground is because if they flew straight up, they would crash into an enormous ceiling. Now, the reason that rockets curve over to the side and go horizontal as they're launching is they're taking advantage of the rotational speed of the Earth from Cape Kennedy, which is about, oh, 800 miles an hour, to get a little boost to get into Earth orbit at 17,500 miles per hour. That's how rockets launch. The space shuttle that you showed was an orbital vehicle. It doesn't fly to the moon. It doesn't go straight out from the Earth into deep space. No rockets do. They go into orbit first, and they use that orbital speed in space to kind of get an extra little boost to go on their way. Now, one thing that you would have to show me if you are asserting that there actually is a physical dome over us, how high is it off the ground? Has any object ever struck it? How do we know that it's there? Can we get a radar return off of it? We can get a radar return off the moon. We can get a radar return off of Venus. Why can't we get a radar return off of the dome over the Earth? And what about satellites? Are those real? Have you ever noticed that satellite dishes don't span across the sky throughout the day? They point a single fixed direction. This is because satellites are not receiving signals from an object orbiting around our Earth. They are receiving signals from a radio tower several miles away. Well, this, of course, leads to all sorts of really great questions. The first question is, do you know what a geosynchronous or a geostationary orbit is? Do the satellite receiving dishes on my roof have to track a satellite? Or do they have to point at a fixed location where the satellite is parked in orbit around the Earth as the Earth rotates? The latter is the case. Do we have tracking stations that do have movable dishes? Well, of course we do. Sometimes we track objects that are moving in relationship to the ground. The satellite you get your television programming from, if you have DISH or one of the satellite networks, is not moving in relationship to the ground. It is parked above a spot on the Earth. All you have to do is point the DISH at that spot once, and it'll continue to receive satellite signals. Unless, of course, it rains. Let's look at another satellite that we all use all the time, and that's the Global Positioning System. These are a constellation of about 23 satellites in orbit around the Earth. They are not in geosynchronous orbit. They do move in relationship to the ground, but there's a constellation up there, and one of the things that we can do is we can predict precisely where each one of these satellites is at any given time. It broadcasts out a time signal. That time signal is received by our phone, and if we have three satellites, we can find our location on the Earth. If we have four, we can find our location and our altitude above sea level. And the way that it does that is by comparing the time signals that are broadcast by the satellites, putting some relativistic corrections in it for more accuracy. But that tells us, by triangulation, exactly where we are. You may have an argument for that, that it's ground-based, if you're on ground. But what if you're in the middle of the ocean? There are no fixed antennas anywhere floating around out there. That signal is coming from satellites. Where are the satellite receivers on aircraft? Are they on the bottom or are they on the top? They're on the top. 
There's a reason for that, because their signal is coming in from above, from space. If heaven is on the other side of the firmament, then that means there's no such thing as space. Didn't you say a couple episodes back that the only thing that was on the other side of the firmament was the waters above? And that's where heaven was? In the water? Just checking. This is important to understand because many people struggle with the idea of a flat earth because they picture a giant disc soaring through the universe, similar to a frisbee flying through the air. You're right. God forbid we have the wrong model of the flat earth in our heads. Now, what exactly is the model of the flat earth? Can you give me some dimensions, some thickness, altitude of the dome? Can you tell me any, anything about this flat earth? You know, the correct model, because I've been doing this for over a year, and so far, nobody has been able to give me a single correct model that is universally accepted in the flat earth community. Now, I built a model of the flat earth, and unfortunately, by making everything that we observe off of Earth fit, it turned out to be a globe. But that notwithstanding, why don't you go ahead and show me what the flat Earth actually looks like? This perception is flawed due to an underlying faulty assumption. And that assumption is this, that space actually exists. Unfortunately, it does not. And if space does not exist, the question must be asked, where exactly are the sun, moon, and stars? You know, this may be presumptuous of me, but if you really want the answer to that, you should talk to the people that help map those stars. That would be the Vatican Observatory. Would you like a link? Well, guys, I hope you found this episode helpful. We learned a little bit about the GPS, the Global Positioning System. We learned how the satellites for the GPS system worked. We learned about satellite television. Now here's a couple of questions. We have radio antennas in Alaska. Why can't we receive satellite television in the northern parts of Alaska? Why is there a limit north and south for reception of satellite telephones? Now I did an episode a couple of months ago on the circumpolar navigation of the Earth, the one more orbit flight. It was done in celebration of the 50-year anniversary of the Apollo launches. Now, one thing that was rather unique about that was it was satellite tracked the entire way. It was easily tracked over the vast expanses of ocean, well away from any radio towers. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from northern Michigan. Our next episode, we're going to talk about the lights in the sky. So make sure you hit that little like and subscribe down in the corner. Hit the bell icon so you get notification when I put a video out. Heck, swing by my Patreon and sign up if you'd like. So in the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy, signing out from Northern Michigan. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you again soon.